Hey guys, Renee here. Today we've got another skincare chat. We are talking about face oils, what you should be using, why, and what you shouldn't be touching with a 10-foot pole. Our whole understanding of oils has somewhat evolved, so we now realize that they are good for all skin types and they can benefit all skin types. However, these are very powerful ingredients, so if you do use the wrong ones, they could betray you. Brutally. So again, this is all about ingredients. Consider this a second part to my moisturizers video. There are a lot of great blends out there and a lot of beauty products that have oils in their formula. So we are gonna talk about the ones that we hear about the most, the most visible ones and available in the market so that you can find the products that are best suited for your skin. The kind of oils that we are talking about today are the ones that benefit our skin the most, which are plant oils. All plants contain oil and fats in their seeds, mainly. So these are rich in antioxidants, nutrition, and vitamins that really nourish and even heal the skin when applied by rebuilding and sustaining the skin's outermost lipid barrier. You will also see mineral oils in a lot of ingredient lists. I mentioned a bit about this in my moisturizers video. These are primarily used to give emollients to a product like a cream, and they also sit on top of the skin, so they form a seal and smooth out the surface. These are also cheap and easy to obtain, so if you're buying an expensive luxury product, you do not want to see mineral oils appear in any of the first few lines of the ingredients list. You'll also see essential oils appear in a lot of ingredient lists. These are the fragrant oils but you really, really need to be cautious because these have a potential to seriously irritate your skin, particularly the really popular ones like lavender and citrus oils. Citrus oils are also present in a lot of skincare products, a lot of oil blends sold by companies, and also in sheet masks. They are highly phototoxic and can cause severe damage if exposed to the sun. I learned this the hard way. I was on vacation. I spilled a product that had a very high concentration of citrus oils in it. On my leg, I was walking around the sun the whole day. Next thing you know, raw, blistering, big patch on my leg, which, and the scar lasted for the next eight months. So the thought of that product going on someone's face and then being in the sun is just scary. So before I begin listing the oils that would be great for you if you have oily skin, I want to distinguish for you what makes an oil better for oily skin versus for really dry skin. If you have oily skin, then you need an oil that is high in linoleic fatty acids. These tend to be a much thinner consistency, they don't sit on top of your skin, they get absorbed quite quickly. Studies have shown that people with acne have lower levels of linoleic fatty acids in their skin surface lipids. So what happens when your skin is deficient in this fatty acid is that your sebum starts to become thick and sticky and pore clogging. This is when your sebum is unbalanced and contains too much of the oleic fatty acids. So when you have oils that are high in linoleic acid in your skincare products, it will really balance out your sebum situation and decrease your breakouts. So the following oils are what you should be looking for. They will nourish and protect the skin, will definitely not be heavy enough for dry skin. So tea tree oil. Tea tree oil products are great for oily skin, acne prone skin. This has disinfecting properties that will kill bacteria in your pores. Never use straight up pure tea tree oil directly on your skin. You will get burned. Maracuja oil or passion fruit seed oil is found in a lot of tart products. It is moisturizing, but it's not heavy at all. This actually is a fantastic under eye treatment. It's not too greasy, but it's nourishing and it will treat your under eye skin. And I really love that Tarte has a maracuja under eye concealer. Grapeseed oil is another one of those oils you wanna look into if you're prone to breakouts. This can also be a great spot treatment. This is great for lowering inflammation. Um, it can actually even dry the skin out a bit, um, but it has an antimicrobial effect on the skin. This is also a natural preservative. Apricot seed oil is another wonderful light oil that's great for oily skin. Um, it's light, it's non-clogging, and it has a lot of natural vitamin E in it. Evening primrose oil is antioxidant rich, vitamin C and E, mildly commodogenic, and is great for inflammation, any kind of skin inflammation. Sea buckthorn oil is just an amazing ingredient. It appears in a lot of fabulous cosmetic products and creams. In fact, it's been a lot of, of the products that I've been reviewing over the past few weeks. 
This is a soothing and calming oil that has been used to heal burned skin and also protect the skin from really blustery or harsh weather conditions. This naturally contains all the important omegas. It's antioxidant rich with vitamin C and E. This helps repair inflammation and heal the skin. This is a heavier, more moisturizing oil, which is great for me when I have dry skin and it's wonderful for the winter months or if you just have severely dry patches of skin. So Fresh's Seaberry Moisturizing Face Oil is one of my all-time favorites, and sea buckthorn oil is the reason why it's so special. Chia seed oil is an amazing ingredient. It is a superfood for your skin. It contains seven times the vitamin C of an orange. Oh, avocado oil is actually extracted from the pulp of the fruit and not the seed. Like sea buckthorn oil, this is a heavier oil, but it's fantastic for healing and treating dry, itchy, damaged, and sensitive skin. And if you have those horrible dry patches on your skin, this is a good treatment for that. Coconut oil is one that we all know and love. It's been used for century to heal damaged skin. There's not a whole lot more that needs to be said about it other than this oil tends to be very commodogenic. While coconut oil is fantastic for the skin all over your body and your hair, um, you might want to be cautious about putting it on your face if you're prone to breakouts. The oils in this category are high in oleic fatty acids, which means they're richer, they're more occlusive, so they're really good at sealing moisture into your skin. And some of these can deliver more moisture than some of your most potent night creams. So chamele oil, this has been my oil of choice lately. I've used it throughout the winter months and I am deeply in love with it. In fact, if I see camellia oil or extract in any ingredient list, I've decided it's for me. This is super rich in antioxidants. In Japanese skincare products, this is called Tsubaki. So I've been using all the Tsubaki hair care Japanese products, but Shiseido has a whole Tsubaki skincare line as well as Bosha. So this oil is native to East Asia and was prized by geishas to help remove their stage makeup and nourish their skin. That is special. Oil, safflower oils are great for dry skin. It contains ceramidin and helps your skin naturally retain a lot of water. For some reason, my skin absolutely adores olive oil, even though it's actually quite a highly commodogenic product. So if you're prone to breakouts or clogged pores, you might want to stay clear away from this. This oil tends to be very, very rich, but for some reason, I just love olive oil cleansers and I love olive oil products. So at the moment, my skin isn't really affected by commodogenicity, if that's even a word. And I tend towards dry skin, so I think that's why olive oil just really works well for me. Sunflower oil is very rich in vitamin E and is great for building a strong skin barrier. So this really helps protect the skin from environmental damage. So sweet almond oil is one that's really interesting to me because it's very moisturizing, but it's also incredibly good at cleaning out the pores. This has also been found to help with photosensitivity and even help reverse sun damage. Mature and aging skin need oils that are chock full of anti-aging antioxidants. Rosehip oil, another one of my favorites. This is a form of vitamin A. So this is nature's Retin-A, a natural source of tretinoin. It's well known for repairing sun damaged skin, which that is what a lot of aging is about, basically exposure to the sun. This is good for hyperpigmentation, great for treating scars and stretch marks. This is a rejuvenation oil. Jojoba oil is one of my all-time favorites. It is non-commodogenic or at the most very mildly commodogenic, but it also has the most sebum-like consistency or makeup, so it absorbs really well into your skin. The first time I ever got exposed to Moroccan oil was the Moroccan oil hair brand, and then of course, Josie Moran. This is from the fruit of a Moroccan tree and is endlessly moisturizing for hair and for your skin. This is antioxidant rich, very high in vitamin E. This is also meant to help with new cell growth and increasing cell turnover, which is something that decreases as we age. This also helps restore the lipid barrier in your skin. Even though argan oil is very well known to be non-commodogenic, this is very high in oleic oils. So this could be a problem if you're prone to breakouts or if you have rosacea or dermatitis, this could further exacerbate the condition. Marula oil is the fruit from the South African marula tree. This is a powerhouse of antioxidants. This contains more antioxidants than even argan oil. This is quite thick, but does absorb really well and really nourishes your skin. Now, when it comes to oils and when you see a lot of oils in formulations, you are actually getting what you pay for. Oil products that are cheap are usually that way for a reason. They're either over-processed 
or they have a lot of cheap fillers added, which completely dilutes their effectiveness. You also want to always make sure that your oils are either organic or natural or cold pressed to maintain the nutritional value. Oils are so packed with antioxidants and nutrition. When you're talking about an oil blend, then you want to make sure that all that stuff sinks into your skin and gets absorbed. So in your routine, you will always put oil on before your moisturizer because your moisturizer will seal all that in. In my skincare routines, you'll see that I actually prefer to press the oils into my skin to make sure it gets in there. And the great thing about good quality oils is that you can pretty much mix them into any product in your skincare routine. I've definitely used this after serum before my moisturizers, but you can also add a few drops into your serum and sort of create this little micro emulsion. You can add a few drops into your moisturizer just to make it a little more rich. You can even mix it into your foundation. Your foundation would just sort of glide over your face. Another great thing to do during the summertime is replace your moisturizer with an oil for your skin type and just after a few minutes of letting that um, oil absorb, lay your sunscreen over. Sunscreen is naturally occlusive. Zinc and titanium dioxide actually will form an occlusive seal, which lets your oil just kind of sink into your skin and just seal it all in. Okay, well, I hope you found this helpful. I hope that this helped you understand maybe why you're reacting or not reacting to certain ingredients or oils. And um, I hope that this just helps you make better choices. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.